This is Friday, December 15th, 2017. We are in Woburn, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and we are privileged to have with us today Dorothy Capone. Welcome, Dorothy. Thank you. May I ask where you were born? In Medford, Massachusetts. And where do you currently live? I live in Woburn, Massachusetts. Your marital status? I am a widow. Do you have children? I have three daughters. Do you have grandchildren? I have five grandchildren. Any great-grandchildren? No. No. <laughs> Tell us about uh, life growing up in Medford. It, uh, at that time, uh, everybody knew everybody, and neighbors were very friendly. And if we needed anything, we could call on them. And what did your father do for a living? My father owned a, a car shop. If your car was in an accident, he would uh, fix it for you. It was very nice. And did you have any brothers or sisters? I just had one brother, no sisters. And you uh, went to Medford schools? Yes. And Medford High School? Yes. When you were going to school, were you made aware of events happening overseas, especially Germany or Italy? No. But you have relatives in Italy. Oh, we have relatives in Italy, yes. And uh, tell, us, uh, tell us a bit about them. Uh, where, what part of Italy did they live? Uh, Filetto, which is uh, the northern part of Italy, I believe. And I understand that especially during the Depression, uh, your family would send money and clothing? Yes, that's right. Okay. Dorothy, do you remember what you were doing when Pearl Harbor was attacked in December 41? I was, uh, in fact, I was the only one in the kitchen listening to the uh, radio, and I heard the president say that we were at war. And uh, I told my aunt that she didn't believe me. And, uh, well, she uh, got the right story, and we were all shocked at the news. So let's uh, talk a little bit about, there were several members of your family who served during the war, and we are actually going to start with your relatives in Italy. Tell us what happened to them. Uh, we had a big house in Italy. And the Germans took over that house and it made, the, made their headquarters there. And my family uh, moved to uh, caves. They had to live in the caves for about nine months. And then the, uh, the Germans uh, saw them and they put them on a train and they didn't know where they were going. They had no money and just the clothes on their back. And, uh, and they would stop somewhere, they wouldn't know where they were. And families uh, at that time, they would take people in and uh, clothe them and uh, give them food. And that's just what uh, these families did for my family. And they were there for the remainder of the war, which was about five months. And uh, they were very lucky. And I understand that the Germans treated your family well overall, is that correct? Oh yes, that's correct. And you had a story about a German officer and providing food for hungry children. Oh yes. Uh, one of the uh, ladies uh, the, was the only one who could speak uh, English and the uh, German general took her in the office and asked her what he could do for her. And she told them they would like the, uh, the food that was, you know, over after their uh, supper. They were just going to throw it away, and if we could have it for the children. So he organized uh, morning, noon, and night uh, that they could come and get the food, which was very nice of him. Overall, what did your family think of Benito Mussolini? Oh, they didn't like him. They didn't think he was fair. 
okay? So your, fam your relatives are up in the northern part of Italy. In the meantime, you have an uncle who is hitting Anzio Beach. Tell us about him. Oh, yes. He did uh, a very brave thing for him, himself. He was wounded uh, with sh shrapnel uh, in his chest, and his, uh, his group was moving out, and he was told to wait for the medics. Well, he waited, and he thought it was too long to wait. So what did he do? He crawled two miles back to his headquarters, and he saved his life. And what was your uncle's name? Uh, Edward de Girolamo. And here's uh, a picture of him okay. here with, with me and my mother. And here he is relaxing on the beach. <laughs> and when he came home to the United States, he was in the hospital for about a year. And uh, he did get uh, the Purple Heart and also uh, these medals, ETO and two battle stars, a combat infantry badge, the Purple Heart, and the Good Conduct uh, Medal. And he got an honorable discharge from the uh, Army. Very lucky. Yes, he was. And uh, <clears throat> what branch of the Army did he serve? Was he in the infantry? In the infantry, okay. yes. Yeah. All right, now let's, um, let's go and talk about your brother. And what was his name? Now, Dorothy, your brother also served in the war. What branch was he? He was in the Navy. And what did he do in the Navy? He was an uh, uh, aviation radio man, third class. And uh, on the airplane, torpedo bomber, <clears throat> TB uh, F Avenger bomber aircraft, and he was on a carrier USS Billow Wood CVL 24, was a U.S. Navy independent class light aircraft carrier, activated uh, World War II in the Pacific, 1943 to 1945. He was in, and my brother was in Japan and Philippines and Hawaii. And uh, he was in the Philippines, uh, oh, I should have ended it right there. Okay. Yeah, he was in Japan, Philippines. I'm did, sorry. Did he, did he um, like write to you or talk to the family about what he did while he was in the Navy? Uh, oh, he uh, he sent letters if he uh, when he had a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I forgot to show his picture. This is my brother. And I understand he just passed away. Our condolences. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, Dorothy, now we're going to be talking about uh, your future husband's cousin who served in a rather unusual vessel, and uh, tell us about that. He was on this uh, famous uh, ship, the Bowden, and he uh, was actually a pharmacist, and when he went exploring with the uh, Bowden, his cousin took over the business in Dedham mm -hmm. for him. And here is a picture of Guy Abbott. And he was on this uh, famous ship, the Bowden, and he sailed with uh, the famed explorer, Admiral Donald McMillan. And what is so unusual about the Bowden? Of the boat. Now, during the war, they were supposed to be, uh, they couldn't wear their uniforms. They were supposed to be just like tourists, and they were hunting for German submarines. So they really 
uh, had a big job. And where were they? Uh, where were they stationed? In the Arctic, Labrador, and Greenland, mm -hmm. and uh, and here is some history about the Admiral. Owned by uh, Maine Maritime Academy now, and that still is a wor uh, worshiping ship at Maine a Maritime Academy. And home ported in Castine, Maine, the Bowdoin's mission is to pro provide sail training for students and the public as, as well as to support recruiting and community relations. Maine's official state vessel, vessel the schooner Bowden, will be participating in numerous events throughout the summer and fall to support local and regional communities. The schooner Bowden was built during the winter of 1920-21 for the famed Arctic explorer Donald Mc McMillan and launched from Hoshid Brothers Shipyard in East Booth Bay, Maine. At 88 feet long, 21 wide, and weighing 66 tons, the Bowden is the smallest vessel designed especially for Arctic work. In 1921-22, the design of the uh, ship proved to be perfect for McMillan's Arctic work, and he sailed the boat more than 300,000 uh, miles. And it was completely rebuilt in 1980-84 by Maine Maritime uh, Museum Boat Shop. And here's a picture of the Bowden. Which Thank is a, mm -hmm. a lovely ship, and I took a, a ride on the ship, mm -hmm. and I was thrilled to do that. And how long was your husband's cousin stationed on the Bowden? He was on uh, during the war three years, mm -hmm. and okay, and before that, uh, mm -hmm. he was a couple of years with uh, Admiral uh, McMillan, and he was very close to uh, McMillan that he had artifacts right in his living room from the, uh, the first Bowden. Now, I understand, Dorothy, that there were several awards given to the Bowden, and what were they? Uh, American Defense Service Medal, American Campaign Medal, European, African, and Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, and World War II Victory Medal. Uh, was that for the ship or for your cousin? That was for the ship, oh, okay. the boat. I just wanted to make sure yes. of that. Now, Dorothy. And this was oh. a friend, uh, Richard, in the Battle of the Bulge. And, uh, was the, uh, and this was the biggest uh, battle of the war in the winter of December 1944, the Germans were uh, defeated. 19,000 uh, men were there. And five months later, in May of 1944, the war was ended. Now, my cousin's last name was DiTulio, and at that time they weren't hiring anybody with uh, Italian names, and she wanted to change her name, but uh, my cousin said, my, uh, her father said no. And another friend, uh, Debbie, her uncle was killed by a sniper and also his medic and in, the, in the Netherlands. In the, and they could not be taken back to the United States. And uh, so what happened the uh, townspeople took over the, uh, the graves of the uh, men that couldn't go back to the United States, and they took care of them, which was very nice. And her father was in the Navy in the uh, uh, 
in the Netherlands as a dentist, and he treated the boys. And his name in rank was Dr. Normand Pequot, lieutenant officer killed in the Netherlands. And after the war, she visited the grave. Um, another friend, her father was in the, uh, on a B-12, no, B-52 bomber as a radio man. And that was uh, Clarence Taylor. And he was a corporal in the Army, and he was a radio uh, operator. And her mother, Gloria, uh, <clears throat> was a whack in the Army. And she uh, drove the colonel around. And she was a junior leader. And she received a victory medal, Women's Army Corps Service Medal, Honorable Service Medal, Lapel Medal. And uh, she was, her picture was on the poster to advertise uh, wax, to oh, join like, the wax. Okay, a recruitment poster then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I understand one of your relatives also helped build the Enola Gay. Is that correct? I'm sorry? Um, one of your relatives helped build the Enola Gay? The what? The, 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 the plane that dropped the bomb on Japan? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have those on another paper. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Okay. Uh, Arthur de Tullio built the plane that dropped the atomic bomb, and he was in the Air Force. And another relative, he was a rank, he was a signal man, and he served in the Philippines and Normandy. And Peter, uh, he, he was Peter Gatici. And Dan Giacomozzi built airfields in the Philippines, and he was in the CBs. Yeah, life, um, talk about life during the home front. Do you remember things like ration books? Uh, oh, yeah. We had, uh, I'm ready, okay. Okay. We had raffin books that we had to raffin everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember myself, we had now nylons. Uh, you couldn't get nylons. And we had makeup, leg makeup, uh, to uh, take the, the place of, uh, of nylons. And... Uh, and the women had to go to work, and that's how they started to continue working also. And uh, we just helped each other. Anything we could do, uh, we would give them uh, metal pans to melt the metal, the, the airplanes. And uh, we had, well, we did a lot of work. We did what we had to do mm -hmm. to keep going. And uh, what about victory gardens? Did you have any of those? Oh, we did have many victory gardens. And uh, we also, uh, in school, also they would uh, make us write uh, letters to the servicemen to keep their morale up. And the same with the adults, mm -hmm. too. And what about war bonds? Oh, yes, there was always uh, selling war bonds, which was a big plus mm -hmm. for us. And uh, we did whatever we could do. Okay, Dorothy. Do you remember uh, where you were when the war ended? Uh, say, May 1945, VE Day. What was I doing at that time? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I really don't remember. I guess I was in school at the time. Okay. Yes, at school. That's where I was. And what about VJ Day in August? Was there any big celebrations? Oh, yes. There were celebrations everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, let's, um, 
this is now after the war. Uh, when did you and your husband get married? I'm sorry? When did you and your husband get married? Oh, I think it was 1953. Okay. And what did your husband do for a living? Uh, at that time, he was uh, uh, an office worker at John, uh, John Hancock mm -hmm. in Boston. And were you working at John Hancock as well? I was. I was a secretary. Okay. And I understand your husband also served but in the reserves. He was, yes. And what branch? Uh, Marines. And he was a, we, but he was never called up, is that correct? Pardon me? He was never called up to uh, go into action? Uh, oh, he, he was uh, after a couple of years. Mm -hmm. He was. And uh, he was supposed to get on this uh, destroyer and then he was called back. They were called back to the office, and that ship was bombed the next day. And, uh, and they were asked to go to a, a tour of Europe as a goodwill ambassador. Well, I hope he enjoyed that. Oh, yes, <laughs> he did. Okay, and uh, Dorothy, we're going to... Uh, get close to wrapping things up here. Is there any, are there any other uh, experiences or stories that you remember from those years? I don't think so. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say, like how important is it for people to serve in the military? Say that again, how? Huh? Well, um, how important was it for your relatives to serve in the military? Oh, anybody who could uh, give service to the United States mm -hmm. is, uh, was wonderful. Okay. I mean, it's a great help. All right, Dorothy, we're going to wrap it up. So we thank you so much for taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. Oh, thank you.